1910. I was eight years old. I went to Sunday school, and it was cloudy. It looked like it was going to storm. And uh, I came out from Sunday school, and the hall the west side of the Bitterroot Valley was red. And I thought, good heavens, is the war coming to an end? And I ran all the way home, and when I got home, my mother said, quick, take a broom and go out and get the chickens and get them all in the chicken house. The um, chickens and turkeys had all gone to roost. And there were cinders a foot long, foot and a half long, uh, coming through the canyons. It turned dark, and uh, my brothers ha each had a haystack they had to watch and put the embers out so the hay wouldn't burn. Everybody was out trying to keep their hay. If, you, if your haystack burned up in August, you wouldn't have any feed for your cows all winter. And uh, they went down to all the haystacks. So I had three brothers, and they had three haystacks, and each one had to keep the, fire, the cinders out. They pound them out with a shovel. But it was very hectic. I was awfully frightened of that storm. And the next day we got the paper. My dad took the anaconda standard, and it told all about the fire. There was a train going from Missoula to Wallace, Idaho and they brought out a whole lot of the people that lived in Wallace to Missoula. And Wallace was hit the hardest. And um, there were a lot of lives lost. And after the fire, it was just terrible. The whole country suffered for it. It was all over the Bitterroot Range. The fire created the wind, and that blew up every night. The smoke was so thick I remember the uh, lack of oxygen. We all felt so tired, like we weren't breathing air, we were breathing some kind of gas. And uh, we looked at each other and said, we're awfully tired. And uh, my mother said, it's just lack of oxygen. There's just not enough oxygen to go around. The fire just destroyed all the air. But it, they got the fire out only because it snowed. They never really got the fire out, fighting fire.